Welcome to Making Stuff Up, the podcast by the Quinny Arts Council team where we talk to all kinds of creators about how they got interested in making stuff up. You're here with your hosts, Cody, Lynn, Janet, and Heather. Today, we thought we'd do something a little different. Instead of talking to an artist about what makes them tick, we're going to talk to each other. All four of us are creatives in our own right, and we're dedicated to helping our members. We hope by the end of this episode, you will know us a little better. All right, guys. So the first question that's to all of you is, how did you end up at the QAC? Uh, my name is Lynn Parkin. I'm the editorial and content director for the Quinny Arts Council. So I ended up here at the Quinny Arts Council after moving back to Belleville um, after being away for about 20 years. And I, I wanted to volunteer with an organization that was doing good in the community and it fit the bill. I'm Cody. My job title is the Communications and Media Director. Um, I graduated from university last year. I just really like the arts and I hope to help uplift people in the arts community. Um, so when I saw job postings for the Quinney Arts Council, uh, I just kept applying for them until Janet got tired and finally hired me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I moved to the area in 2017. I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Heather. I am the program director at the Quinney Arts Council, and I've been here since November. I moved to the area in 2017, and um, I was kind of looking to see how could I fit into the arts community. I have a background in music education and some performance stuff, and I have a passion for choral music as well. So. Um, I've been keeping my eyes and ears open. I saw the advertisement, applied for it, met Janet, and just thought, oh my goodness, I need to be at the Arts Council. So I was a member of the Queenie Arts Council for many years, just supported the arts community. And I had a daughter who, um, I have a daughter, she's an arts, art student, now graduated from Ryerson after doing three years at OCAD. So she was in the arts program at Centennial, and they have to do 80 volunteer hours, 40 of them specifically with the arts. So she did her 40 hours at the Quinney Arts Council. And then in 2017, 2018, I joined the board. And then I learned a lot about the Art Council, and I had a vision for what I'd like to see happen here. And I got the opportunity in 2018. They hired me as then the general manager and then into the executive director position. Uh, when I started here, there was a time when I was here by myself, so I learned everybody's job. And I think that really helped in the work that I do now, because now I see what everybody needs to do their job. And I guess my job is to make sure everybody has the tools to, to do their job. Awesome. We think you do a good job at that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a team. We all do great in our roles. We do really work well as a team, I think. Um, so who or what sort of inspires you in your career? That's such a big question because I feel like I've been, been in my career for a really long time. Um, I feel really fortunate that I've met so many great people along the way. Um, some people will say, oh, you're talented at what you do. And I don't feel that way. I feel like I've met a lot of great mentors and learned so much along the way. Of course, for me, um, a lot of educators in my history have been mentors and um, inspirational for me. And my career started in Toronto. Uh, uh, working in live entertainment and performing arts and I got to meet a bunch of New York uh, performing artists and behind the scenes creatives who were writing music for musicals and scripts and um, what a great opportunity it was to um, just sort of observe and see that whole community click and um, and hear their stories of how they got to be the artists that they are. So uh, those stories always reflect to me in my day to day when I'm, um, when I'm looking forward in the arts community. I actually do have a person specifically, I'm not sure I need to say names, but there, I've known this person since high school and kind of watched the way he navigates things and he comes from a big family and he has that gift of um, really hard work, which I believe in, and at the same time, balancing it with family time. 
And I think that's really important. So it's something that I watch and I want to bring to my, I try to, to bring that balance into my life. What sort of inspires me is like the community around me and uplifting people that I know and the people that I'm part of like their communities. We have just put on um, our Everyone Under the Rainbow Pride show and I have a lot of friends in that community and so I wanted to make sure that my artist friends had like a safe space to um, have their voices heard. So uh, I was really passionate about putting that on. Um, so it's, it's for me, it's like my friends in the community that keep me inspired. I guess I have um, two people that inspired me and I'll start with my, I think it was my grade uh, six teacher, Mr. Boyd at St. Joseph's School. Um, I had a writing assignment do and I did a creative story that was inspired by one of my dreams and he pulled me aside and he said did somebody help you write this <laughs> and I said no and he said well I think you have a natural talent um, you know keep pursuing it and I always did uh, so I would say he was my first inspiration but my aunt Julie she's an inspiration too she's the author of three books and um, she's just got an amazing zest for life. She, when she was younger, um, she wanted to learn Spanish, so she moved to Spain wow. <laughs> for several years. And, you know, she's just been an absolute inspiration for me. Um, what's the career highlight you're most proud of? It doesn't have to be here, it can be anywhere. For career highlight, that's probably running a freelance business for five years. Uh, it got to a point where it was either expand or, um, you know, decide to go back into the workforce, the regular workforce. You know what they say when you you work, you leave your 40 hour uh, a week work job, regular job, uh, to work 80 hours a week as, as somebody who's self-employed. So I decided to go more back this route. <laughs> I actually think my career highlight so far has been here and it has been the advocacy work I did for the provincial election, which I'm hoping to continue for the municipal election. Um, but contacting all the politicians, getting them to come in and interview about their stance on the arts, I just think that was like a really cool opportunity. The career highlight is always about um, the musical moment or the artistic moment um, where time stops. And what makes it even more of a highlight is when you share that with somebody, whether it be students, whether it be um, another a fellow artist, whether it be um, the audience, um, that to me is why I do what I do, is because it's that intrinsic feeling, that intrinsic moment. I thrive on that. It's umbrella. Transitioning that newspaper that um, people contributed to and created into something that's more curated and, um, and intentional and being able to uh, figure out how to make it happen and sustain itself, that's been the biggest reward for me. Super cool, and I think that's a huge reward for the Quinty Art Arts Council as well. Yeah, the whole arts community. It, it, goes, it has a really far reach, so we're lucky. I love the umbrella. I, I read it before working here. It was one of those things that I'd always be excited to see and pick up because it was always so pretty. Like, not a lot of magazines put the effort into being so visually appealing. There's always something, but I love that about the umbrella, how it's always really, really pretty. Yeah, it has, it has some staying value. Yes, the first time I read it, I just thought, oh my goodness, how do I get involved in, in what's happening in this? Um, so it's inspirational in many ways. Yeah. Um, I was really honored when Janet invited me to be a contributing writer to the umbrella in 2019. And I've always been so proud of that magazine. Yeah. I love it. We love how you write those articles too. <laughs> yeah, <just> Thank you. <laughs> Since I've started here, it's like, oh, Lynn's articles, those are great. I love them. Awesome. <laughs> Done. They don't need much editing at all. It, it's got an evergreen feel to it too, which is great because it can, you know, the umbrella can sit on coffee tables for years. And I love when, if you're kind of like scrolling through your socials and you see people's, I see it on people's tables in their houses I see it in businesses I love it so what's the best thing you've learned in your current position me sure conflict management oh, 
I think how I just did that sound. In there. How not to take it personal. And mm. no, not don't take it home. I would say I've learned to, in, in this position, and I've only been here for about a month and a half, but um, in freelance writing as well, to edit slowly. <laughs> take your time with editing and, um, and really pay attention to the details, the smallest little things. Um, I think that's been an important lesson. Um, and also just go with the flow. I think I'm learning just sitting here listening to what you've all learned because now it's like, I better learn that. <laughs> I better learn about editing slowly. Okay, so what have I learned in this job? I've learned about Janet, which is like so awesome. I, every day Janet just inspires us in our workplace and she makes it fun to be here. And she, I love the line where she says, there will always be work to do. So when I'm feeling overwhelmed or, oh, or I don't stop working or something like that, Janet is really good at mellowing me out. And I just love the work environment she provides and I'm learning about that every day. I feel like I've just learned to keep learning. Like no matter yeah. what I do, there's always something to learn. There's always something to, to grow with, which has been like pretty cool working here. It's, it's nice to not stop learning. I mean, that's why I have a problem of going to school so much um, because I just like learning. So it's, it's nice that it's. But you're learning the trick that you can actually learn and get paid for it too, right? Yeah. So yes. learning in the job. And I think that's something too when I, where you were asking questions about our career earlier and um, there's lots of things I've had the opportunity to be part of and that's because I love learning. Because it's like if I'm not learning, then it's time to move on and try something different, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a silent partner here that, we, that isn't at this table. We are only as good as the board. Yes. And although over the last couple of years, it's kind of, there's been a disconnect because we haven't been meeting in person. If you have a supportive board, then you, you can just do it. You can learn, you can take risks, as long as things are moving forward. And our board right now is an incredibly supportive board. So I think, you know, kudos to the board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That is, it's such a, it's the elephant in the room with any nonprofit organization. And um, as employees, it's so important that we understand nonprofit versus other situations and other work environments because there's things in nonprofit that we have to just let go and let happen and have it evolve because that's how the beast works. Or we decide, you know what, it's not the right fit for me because. Um, it, it, it's just it's a different way of working right we work for our passion and for what we love to do not for the paycheck and the climbing the ladder and um, that side of things does that make yeah, sense it does and it, I also have to say like kudos to everybody at this table because we all are artists in our own right and when you're working here you kind of put your your discipline off to the side to elevate everybody else's. And that takes a certain type of person to do that. It's pretty special. Yeah, I know it's um, sometimes hard to hear when Janet says, oh, you know, I really miss writing. Or I'm sitting here with three amazing writers. I'm not a writer at all. But I'm sitting with these amazing writers and we're talking about what have we read lately. And sometimes it's like, well, I haven't really had the chance to read yet. And that's hard on the ears because that's your passion. And I love that Janet says, you know, you still have to do something that you're passionate about um, and that you're, you're exploring your art form um, outside of this job. And, and we all have our specialty because when you start talking music, I, I you totally must geek see out. My eyes glaze over. I don't. Well, recognize sometimes any they of roll. The names. Sometimes they, they roll. They are not roll. <laughs> they aren't rolling. They're rolling in the back of my head because I don't know what you're saying. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> That's okay. I always just nod and look like a deer in headlights when you talk about writers or editors, and and I think about quoting the last book that I was reading. <laughs> so you're, you're, yeah, you're a professional in what you do, and mm -hmm. we're amateurs, and we're, everybody's got their profession and their amateur. So we get to learn from each other yeah. in this job, too. Another plus, tick. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome to see the passion 
when you were talking about music and what inspires you, Heather, um, the passion behind what you were saying was, was very clear, and that's inspiring. Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh. her feet don't touch the ground. <laughs> I'm so lucky I get to explore that passion, because yeah. um, many people for life circumstances don't have that opportunity, and that's what I love about the council, is how do we help artists fulfill their potential as artists? Um, if we can do that, if I can contribute to that on a daily basis, my bucket is full. So if you guys could do it all over again, would you do it? Would you pursue the same career? Would you do it all the same? Definitely. I would do it all the same. Um, and I would just keep doing it. And I think that's the only difference is I do feel sometimes I'm losing momentum. It could be my age. It could be also the age of my kids because I do, uh, I am a mom and support what's going on with my kids and they're getting more active and they're very busy in sports. So I think it's just that, that will to keep pushing ahead and keep um, exploring. It's not as strong as it was when I was younger. Um, that would be the only thing I would change is hold on to that strength in adventure and moving forward. I think I would. Um, I've always wanted to be a writer and I've always wanted to um, work in an organization that that is doing something good um, in the community. That's really important to me. Um, and I think my trajectory has always been trying to get to this point. So I, I'm quite happy with where I am. Yay, you made it. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> woo, woo. I would probably do it all over again because I've been pursuing this since I was five because my brother watched a lot of the Ninja Turtles and uh, April O'Neil was a redheaded reporter and I was like, I want to do that. But it's been my choice since I was five because I wanted to befriend Ninja Turtles. Sadly, I have befriended no Ninja Turtles as of yet, but there's always time. <laughs> it's on the list. I have always done really well at writing. I think it was grade nine. By the time I was in grade 13, I had a Miss Ballard. She actually wrote me a card when I graduated, and she was my English literature teacher, and I wanted to pursue English lit, and my parents um, were like, no, there's, no, you need a real job. So my, I think I had, I don't know, a 90 something, 96 or something in English, and so I had 95 in economics, so I studied business. And so no, I wouldn't do it that way. I would flip it and go and do my English literature literature because I I was I found marketing interesting in business but it wasn't what I chose to do so I would have done a lot better if I had followed my English lit dream. I think it's interesting um, how people can inspire or kind of uninspire your choices. And in in uh, high school. I had a guidance counselor that told me, um, you know, she asked me, what am I interested in? And I was really passionate about social sciences and English, and I was taking a journalism class, and I wanted to pursue sort of that line of things. And she said, oh, no, you don't want to do that. There's no work in those things. They were my best subjects. And she said, you want to do computers. You definitely, it was right in the, the 90s, and it's like, no, that's the emerging thing and it ended up that I, I did end up working with computers but com computers and content and people and community so I think even though you know people can kind of uninspire your your path um, you might find ways to get back on it and now let's take a minute to thank one of the sponsors who made today's show possible McDougal Insurance is the largest insurance brokerage in eastern Ontario they care about their communities by supporting charities and nonprofit organizations. Representing over 50 insurance companies gives McDougal the unique ability to find you the most competitive rates possible. Operating since 1946, McDougal Insurance focuses on their legendary service to help serve you, their customers. If you're looking for personal, commercial, farm, and life insurance or financial services, look no further than McDougal Insurance. All right. How do you like to spend your days off, even though we do work 24-7? Um. How do we like to spend our days, or how do we spend our days? <laughs> Either or. How do you like? What's, what's your ideal day? I like day? to spend my day with my family. My kids are awesome right now. They're 11 and 13, and uh, usually we're at their activities. Right now it's soccer, soccer, and soccer. 
and swimming and baseball and lots of outdoorsy stuff. And uh, if I'm not with my kids, the ideal day, a nice bottle of wine and a paddle board. They sound like they don't mix very well. <laughs> and sure they do. And some good friend conversation. That fills my day. Um, I really like to go um, for a motorcycle ride with my husband. Um, that's something we love doing. Um, Ooh, I like doing that with my husband, too. We should <laughs> double ride together. For sure. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, awesome. Go to the county and do a tour. Gears. Yeah, yeah. I like to ride on the back. I don't want to drive. Oh, Me my too. gosh. I can just opposite. have a couple of glasses. Being on the back. I got to drive. Love. I trust my husband. He's Mr. Safety. Mine, too. <laughs> I just want to drive. So th- that's... It, it, I love cooking as well. Um, one of my favorite places to be is, is in the kitchen. That sounds old fashioned, but <laughs> it's being creative in the kitchen. I would say that that's um, a big creative outlet for me. Um, I love to bake and to cook. Um, or just a quiet day reading a book on my patio, probably with a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're sen- sensing a bit of a trend here. Okay, so I'll just start with the wine. I do <laughs> bottle my own wine. Family was number one. I also like to cook, and an extension of that is garden. So if in the summer, spring, summer, fall, it's gardening, and then put it all in the freezer, and all winter long I'm cooking with it. So spending time with family, cooking with a glass of wine. And on the weekends, we love to go uh, art and antique hunting. Um, I'm antisocial, so I like to read, and that's basically it. How many books have you read in this I'm year? on my 70th book. 70? 70. Yeah, I'm trying to this get to year. 104. Wow. It's yeah. pretty impressive when you. she comes in on a Monday, and she's like, I read three books this weekend. My current TBR is over 200 books, so like, I have the books to read. Um, I have a problem, <laughs> and I am aware. <laughs> Yeah, where do you keep all these books? So most of them are ebooks, but I also have a lot of physical books. Um, and I did just buy a new bookshelf to um, to fit them, and that's a problem. Oh. I've actually recently discovered you can buy stamps with your names on them and stamp your books like Cody's Library. And I'm very excited Absolutely. to order my stamp. And I'm also cataloging all of my books because, like I said, I have a problem. Um, and you can like make your own little like library that way. And yeah. It's no, a problem. This, this is not a problem. It's a fantasy for me. It's like the ultimate nerd. I'm I'm on TikTok. I'm on Book Talk, and like I, I'm very active over there. So I read books and I like make videos about them, like reviewing them and giving people spoilers so that they don't have to read some of the things that I have read. Well, some of the biggest writers, authors have that book stamp. I yeah. have books. I got a book from Peter C. Newman, and then open it up, and there's his stamp inside. Oh my God, that's my dream. Yep. A stamp is my dream. Stamps. <laughs> okay, uh, let's do a brain bowl question. Yeah. Who wants to I'm pick from Yorick? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll dive in. Uh, Cody, explain oh. the brain bowl while <clears throat> Lynn is picking up the question. So, the concept of the brain bowl is great because it's just random questions, um, but instead of being in a bowl, it's inside a skull. It's in a brain. <laughs> it's it's literally his brain, brain, and I'm calling him Yorick because I have spent a lot of time reading Shakespeare. It's pretty creepy. Very fitting. <laughs> okay, so the uh, brain bowl, mm-hmm. the brain bowl question. If you could choose any two famous people to have dinner with, who would they be? Marilyn Monroe and Jimi Hendrix. Oh, that'd be a fun dinner. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie, because that just seems like it'd be a good time if you're a Marvel fan. Meryl Streep and... Graham Norton. Oh, I so like that fun. answer. So fun. I picked dead people. <laughs> I picked hot people for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say uh, Stephen King um, and and, us. Uh, and all of you guys. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we all want to meet Stephen King, too. <laughs> we are like two degrees of separation away from Stephen King, so maybe we can make this happen. Where did you grow up, and what was it like growing up there? I grew up in Belleville, and um, growing up here was was great. I felt the need to to get away and explore um, bigger cities, and um, you know, I lived in Kingston, and I lived in Vancouver, and I lived in London, Ontario, and all we wanted was what we had back here. So being on the Bay of Quinney, and so close to Lake Ontario, and all the 
the lakes um, more closer to, to Kingston, Frontenac area. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful um, region to live in. Yeah, I think I grew up similar, similarly to Lynn um, in a smaller town, and I had a really great upbringing. It was just a wonderful childhood, and I think um, my parents did a good job, so now I want to give my kids the same sort of experience that I had growing up. Um, but same as you, once I reached a certain age, I was excited to get out and explore and spent time in Toronto and Vancouver and um, eventually now as a mom, I'm bringing everyone back to a smaller town feel and um, we're just loving it. It's, it's really great that um, I can give our kids what my parents gave us. I grew up here as well. Uh, three sisters. We had a lot of freedom. I was a latchkey kid. And um, but I, what we got from that was that my mom, she worked. Um, what my mother-in-law says, did you earn your keep? We earn our keep. And she um, lived her passion, which was horses. So us four girls were, you know, we got ourselves to school. We jumped on our bike and got ourselves to a baseball practice. And that was quite a hike. But uh, we made it happen. So we had a lot of freedom. And we did, I did move out to BC and all my girlfriends moved away. And it's fun that we've all come back and reconnected. And we're back here. I agree. It's beautiful, a beautiful place to live. Yeah, this is also where I grew up, um, sort of Belleville, the Rossmore area. Um, it, it's just a gorgeous place to live. It's a good place to grow up. So what was your first job? My first job was, uh, aside from babysitting, um, when I was young, was working at Tim Hortons. I was a dance teacher to three-year-olds, baby ballet on Saturdays. Adorable. I did inventory for the books at Greenleaf's when I was 14. Nice. I was a dedicated paper girl from grades 6 to 12. Yeah. I can see that in your personality. Yeah, That's my mom took over after a while in high school, but I was a dedicated newspaper carrier. Was that the days of the punch card? It was. Oh, and like was knocking so cool. on the door yes. every month to collect, to which yes. is incredibly dangerous. Yes, it was. And, have, and it's have children. A 10-year-old kid go and collect money. <laughs> right? <laughs> and like some people, like I had a one customer pay me like the tip as a used scratch card. Like I can't I can't cash that in. I'm a literal child, but yeah. That's a uh, well, I'd have people get mad at me because I did do papers too. I'd have people get mad because they didn't have the money that, well, I don't have it. To, what are you yelling at me for? I, just, I gotta do this. <laughs> I am a child. I don't have a say in this. Please take this up with the paper company. <laughs> child <laughs> labor laws have changed. Oh. But nowadays, I don't think children can deliver the newspaper. Can no. They? No. No. Oh. All right. So, what did you guys want to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be a teacher. When I was really young, I used to play teacher. Um, and then, uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, my, my grade six teacher, um, he inspired me to, to then become a writer, and I started writing as a hobby. I wanted to be an archaeologist. I wanted to be a dancer on Broadway. But then I really got the pressure from family to attend university. And how lucky am I that they supported me in attending university through the arts. Um, but I do remember one time I was in my first year in music at Queen's and um, my mom called and left me, or she went to leave me a message and I answered the phone. She's like, why are you answering the phone? Aren't you supposed to be in class? And yes, I was, but I had a bit too much fun the night before and didn't make it to my class. And she goes, oh, I'm just calling to let you know that such and such a production, uh, they need somebody right away and uh, wanted you to come in for another audition. And, and she said, but I told them you can't because you're away at school. And so that kind of changed the direction of my, my outlook. But I'm so glad it happened. At the time, I was devastated and thought, oh, my God, I got to call them. Where's the number? How can I get in touch with them? I'll get on the GO train and get my butt to Toronto. I need that job. And um, I'm glad I didn't because my path would have been different. And Sorry, I, I just want to add that um, your story inspired me. <laughs> this... Um, for a little while, I really wanted to be a fly girl. <laughs> no way. Yeah. That would have been very cool. In living color? In living color. I need some context there. In living color? What? They're like hip-hop dancers. 
the the backup dancers on, for the show. They're J Lo was one, and right. Jay Chappelle wasn't he? Yep. Dave, Dave, Dave Chappelle, and yeah. who were the other guys? There's the Wayne's whole, Brothers. Yeah, a whole crew. Yeah. Jim Carrey. Yeah, sort of like a an SNL more swing urban, to it, yeah. but very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know that I said that my passions have been like reporting and acting, but my secret career that I wanted when I was little was a marine biologist and then a cryptozoologist. I love it. I get it. Mm -hmm. And even now, like I still, I'm kind of obsessed with like the animals that might not exist and, and the ocean. Cause yeah, there's, we have not explored that much of the ocean. No. So there's so much that we don't know, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I get a little claustrophobic when I go too far under the water. So my passion has been um, cut short by my physical <laughs> inability to do that. But now there's HD TV and you can see everything that's under there. You just didn't have to do the adventure to get to it. Yes, but I hold my breath. Like when you're when you're looking at like watching videos of oh, submarines, really? I accidentally hold my breath and then I will be oh, gasping because wow. I'll be like, oh my God, I can't breathe because I'm actively not breathing because my brain is convinced I'm underwater. All right, so let's tell everybody a little bit about our artistic passions. Well, of course, writing. And I knew that um, it was a passion when I sat down to write one day and um, 30 pages in, I had no idea what time it was. Mm -hmm. Choral music and orchestral music, but I do have um, a real passion for the voice and experimenting with sound. Writing is a passion. I, I was going to say that I, I tend to be more of an appreciator of the arts, um, but, but writing is an art in itself as well. Um, you know, the, every writer has their own voice, their own style and vernacular. I really like a lot of creation in general, um, like with video editing and things like that. Uh, and writing is something that I do for fun as well, but I definitely act and do uh, voice work and things like that. All right, guys, um, let's do something fun. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I would like to fly totally because it's all do. about the adventure. Like if I could fly, I could go anywhere. The accessibility, um, you, what you could see is just out of this world. Like flying would give you pure freedom. It's the freedom for me too. I love the idea of flying. I thought about teleportation, but I actually, the journey is part of what I would love to experience. So the one of the last times we flew out of Bella Coola, it was clear. And you know those National Geographic shows where you see the plane going over the mountains? That was as close to me personally flying as I could get. I would love to do that, flying over the mountains and just seeing where, the freedom to see everywhere where you're going. That's mine too. Telepathy? Um, when I was young, I used to always admire um, Phoenix from the X-Men. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I thought she was a really cool character, so it would probably be something like that. Mine is also X-Men inspired, and it's telekinesis. I want to move things with my mind, but I do know myself um, well enough to know that I will not use this power for good. So if a car <laughs> is blocking me in traffic, I'm moving it out of the way. Love it. I want to be around to see you use your superpower. I would 1,000% sure. turn supervillain, and like no regret, <laughs> no concern. I'd be like, Australia's mine now, I guess. <laughs> okay, uh, what podcast do you guys like to listen to? Well, it's hands down Smartless. Smart. Less. Smartless. Mm -hmm. I don't really listen to a lot of podcasts. <laughs> Shame. Maybe if we talk enough about Smartless, it will encourage, we can get some sort of partnership with them. Yeah. What's your favorite book? Anything by Stephen King. I will always pick up anything he writes. <laughs> Lives and Sorrows of Josephine B. by Sandra Gulland. Of course, I just love historical fiction. So, uh, Oldie but a goodie. To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee. I'm a Libra who can't make up a decision, so uh, probably the Hunger Games series, or Anne of Green Gables, or Harry Potter, Anne or A of Court Green of Thorn Gables. and Roses. Yeah, Anne of Green Gables is so good. I just read too much to have and a single Little favorite. House in the Prairie. Oh, I did love. But um, that is one of those books that, like, I read um, the one where the dog dies, and I was inconsolable, and my dad tried to comfort me by saying, well, you know, Code, um, if it, he would be dead by now anyway. And I was like, that did not help. <laughs> that did not help. <laughs> what was the last book you read? The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. Again, historical fiction. 
It's great. I like it. But I do really like her book, The Alice Network. So good. Jump in and say it, Cody. I, I have that one book on my TBR, and I love The Alice Network. Yeah, The that Alice Network is such a good one. It's just awesome. So cool. Uh, the last book I read was, um, it was kind of like a memoirs by a comedian, uh, Rita Rettner. Um, hilarious stuff. Um, it was titled, I've still got it. I just can't remember where I put it. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> um, I think that it was called The High Mountain Court. It was a fantasy about fairies retaking their kingdom because I like fantasy books. Nora I'm Ephron. Oh. I'm sad about my neck. Hilarious. Did it make you laugh out loud? Oh, yeah. And uh, it's actually pretty. It's a pretty. It's a look at life in like Manhattan. Okay. It's pretty interesting. I love it when a book actually accomplishes that, when it, what you're reading makes you laugh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. Oh, yeah. She's like Sleepless in Seattle, You've Got Mail, all of those. I'm going to check that out. What's one thing you will absolutely never do again? Skydiving. But you've done that. Good for you. Yep. When I was 18, um, just old enough to skydive <laughs> without consent from an adult. Um, I did a skydive in Gananoque um, into the Canada Day celebrations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was quite the experience. Um, but now in my 40s, I, I will never, I, I no, not was again. Was it a planned arrival or? It was a planned arrival. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the festivities. So they were demonstrating um, what a, a tandem skydive is. And I volunteered. <laughs> Good for you. Sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. I can't say that there's anything I would never do again. Polar bear swims. Oh. Mm. Those days are over. Northern BC. Just like a million little knives. Um, I don't think I'll ever pull an all-nighter again. I don't mm. need to do oh, that no. anymore. Um, and final question, guys. What's something you're excited about right now? Uh, we recently booked tickets, my husband and I, to take my son Ryan um, to Montreal to see uh, Cirque du Soleil. Nice. And I have wanted to do that for so long. Excellent. So I'm super excited. I'm just excited for summer weather and chilling out in my backyard. I'm really excited. Uh, I have tickets to a drag show in July to go see the Queen Priyanka. So I want to go see that. I'm very excited. Is that in Toronto? No, it's actually um, in the county at oh. the Hayloft. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've booked some great stuff in. I'm excited to take a trip out west and see my grandkids again. Thanks, guys. I hope our audience feels like they know us a little better now that they know what our secret superpowers would be. That's it from this episode of the QAC Podcast. This is your Potterator Cody signing off. Remember to always be making stuff up.